Greetings and welcome to another BI Sensei tutorial video. This one is about DAX and Power BI, but what I'm going to do a little bit differently this time around is to introduce ChatGPT into the way I work these videos, to also learn a little bit more about that, but also to see the solutions that ChatGPT comes up with in comparison to what I come up with and see and actually run the suggested solutions and see how that measures up. Okay, cool. So let's talk about this video. Specifically, we're going to look at hierarchies. So what, what do we mean by hierarchies? So hierarchies, hierarchies are created in the data model in Power, Power BI to simplify browsing by the users by suggesting a path or hierarchy. So what do I mean by that? So typically, a good hierarchy would be something like, if we look here in the calendar, we have a hierarchy for dates. So we basically have year, quarter, month, and day. If I drag that into a matrix, you can see we're basically year, quarter, month, and day. Cool. And then if we look at something like products, if we look at products over here, products, uh, product hierarchy. So here we have product, the category, subcategory, and category name. You see the category, the subcategory, and the actual product underneath it. That's what we mean by hierarchies. Common use cases for hierarchy is quite simple. So this is a common thing that you'll find. So in this case, we have all of these categories. You can see the total sales amount for those given the filter context. You can see that 95% of our sales went to bikes. Okay, but if we want to break that down into its child components, you can see 48% of bikes come from road bikes. And of that 48%, you can actually have a little look at the individual products underneath there and what percentage they make up. So the percentage... Um, within a parent node. That is a good calculation to do uh, using hierarchy. So hierarchies can be used for calculations. So before we go on, let's now go to ChatGPT. Let's try this experimental part of the video. So the interesting thing with these AI tools like ChatGPT is you obviously need to ask the question in detail. So the better your question, the better the answer would be. So I'm just going to start very basic. I'm going to type the pre-made question in here. So what a DAX measure that calculates the percentage itself of a product as a portion of its parent category and data model where products are allocated to a product category. That's exactly what we saw at the end. So I'm just going to run this. Let's see what it comes up with. And we, at the end of the video, we'll test my results against this. Or we'll run the, the chat GPT um, code against my results. See if it gives something similar. Now, my question could be very vague. So let's see what this comes up with. Divide. Yeah, that's that's good. That's good. I would do that totally. That makes sense. That could work. Look how cool that is. And it's suggesting that we put it in the matrix visual to see the total percentage selected product. That's a, that's a good suggestion. Let's go a little bit deeper. So let's quickly see. Let's introduce... Uh, write a DAX measure that determines the hierarchy level of a product and their related product category. Let's see what it comes up with that. So I'm going to use all of these at the end of the video to see how it measures up. See, my question could be a little flawed. Okay. Is filtered? Yeah, cool. That's pretty cool. This is very impressive. I don't think that will give us the right thing. But once again, that is my question. I need to phrase my question a little bit more in detail. Pretty cool, though. So it's giving you a nice explanation of... See, it's also then suggesting you use it in the matrix. Very cool. Very impressive. Okay, so now I'm going to try the other one. I'm going to ask it to actually give me all of that, but use the in, is in scope function, which I use in my solution. I just want to see how it uses that. Pretty cool. This tool is incredible. I'm definitely going to start using it in my code to compare things, solutions, and maybe get better ideas for solutions. Yeah, yeah it's not going to work, but the in scope, yeah. Let's see. I, I mean, I guess the big thing is it doesn't really have access to my data model. So I need to modify this to fit into my data model, the context. The context. What I like is the, the explanation it gives you. It's very interesting, very cool. 
All right, first part of the video is how do we create a hierarchy in Power, uh, in Power BI? So first, first what you do is you select your table where you want to create the hierarchy in. Let's say we want to take the product category. This is the product table. I want to take the product category. I just click there. I say create hierarchy. Cool, it's going to create a hierarchy. There we go. Now what I do is I want to add subcategory to that. So what is a sub? Click on subcategory. I click on that little thing. I say add hierarchy. Whoop. So now you can see it's added that to the hierarchy. Category, subcategory. And last, I want to take the product name. Click on that little thing over there. Say add to hierarchy. Add to hierarchy. So now what we have is we got our actual hierarchy created. All I need to do now. All I need to do now is drag it. Let's say there's the matrix. I want to drag it into the matrix over there. There we go. There is our hierarchy. So you can see accessories, categories. So you have your category, your subcategory, and then your actual product. All right. So the first thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to calculate the current level, detect the current level of the hierarchy. Um, of the actual individual line, so product, subcategory, uh, product, subcategory, and product category. So how do we do that? We're going to use the inscope function. So just to give you some background, I'm going to quickly show you how inscope works. Where is my DAX Studio? So DAX Studio, we basically here. Um, I'm creating a matrix here based on product category, and I'm using inscope on the product category, subcategory, and product name. So what inscope does, it returns true or false, whether it's inscope, is it on the same hierarchy? So here we only have the product category. So I'm expecting only the product category to be in scope and the subcategory and product name to be out of scope. So let's run that. You can see only categories in scope, but not subcategory or product. If I now introduce subcategory and I rerun it, it's going to have that in scope with the, but if I include the product, it's going to have all of them in scope. So how do we create the measure knowing that? So what we'll do is let's say we create the new measure. I'm just going to paste the code in there. We're going to use the in scope function here. So let's quickly do that. I'm going to quickly take you through this. So we're basically saying, is the product in scope? Is the subcategory in scope? Is the category in scope? So what we do next is we use the switch statement. Switch statement to basically detect the very first level. So if switch, we're looking for any uh, any given time that this might be true. So we start at the bottom of the hierarchy. So is it is the product in scope? If it's yes, then it will stop right there. Let's say it fails that, and it says second one is. The cat subcategory in scope, yes or no, true or false. And then the third one is, is category in scope, true or false. And if there's no filter, like at the grand total, it says no filter. So this will actually, this order is quite important. You can't mix this order up. This order needs to be from lowest to highest. Okay. So in terms of the hierarchy. So let's quickly run. I just want to show you what it does in terms of the visual. If we bring it into here, let's say product level. You bring it in over here as a thing. So you can see that accessories is on category level, but bike racks is on subcategory level. And if we go a little bit deeper, that is on product level. So that's what we basically did with that statement there. Pretty cool. That's the basis for the hierarchy step we're going to do next. Now evaluate the product, the total sales percentage of the hierarchy. So child to the parent, what percentage does it make up? So let's quickly say new measure, whoop, new measure. Paste it in there. First thing that we do is we create a variable for all the selected products. We basically, I say, everything selected for them product, done. So for anything where, so we're basically creating a table for products in a category. So we're gonna use calculate table, and we're gonna say, from the them product table, we're gonna take all, all of the selected products, but we're just gonna basically filter it out here. We're just looking at anything um, that's related to the product category, so anything in that category. Then we do the same for the subcategory, then product there, and then do it per subcategory. Okay, so those are level one and number level two. Now, obviously, on the product level, we don't need that. So now, uh, the numerator is the actual sales amount. That is the total amount that we need to divide by. Okay, uh, or divide from. So the, the denominator, basically here, if we're going to use that product level measure we did earlier, we're going to say switch product level. So if that product level measure is on the category level, right, calculate the sales amount for all selected products. Okay, 
for all selected products. So basically that one. So basically all sales on a category level. Then on the subcategory level, we're going to create, we're going to cal uh, calculate the total sales, but based on a product in category level, in the category. Okay. And then for product, we need to then divide it by its subcategory. So the category is child to the category. Product is child to the subcategory. That's why we're doing the calculate the sales amount for products in subcategory. So it's parent category, subcategory. And then what we do at the end is we just basically say that gives the denominator. We say the numerator, which is total sales, divided by the denominator, which we calculated with this simple switch statement, and we're going to have the result. That's going to give us an interesting thing here. So let's quickly bring that in. I'm going to take out the product level. Let's drag it in there. Take out the product level. And also, let's just format this as a percentage. Cool. So now we can see accessories make up 2%, bikes 9%. This is now on a category level. If I want to drill into, let's say accessories, we can see, oh, accessories, bike racks make up 5%. Uh, helmets make up 32%. Let's look at the different kind of helmets. Sports, uh, that's that's quite cool. So now it's, you can see the percentage of each. This is the measure we created now. It's pretty cool. So you can drill in through the hierarchy on the total percentage of sales of that of its parent in comparison to its parent. Okay, cool. So let, now let's come back to chat GPT. I'm going to take these measures that, they, that, that um, chat GPT suggested and I'm going to see if it fits in. It's probably not going to work well. I can already see it's not going to work, but let's just quickly see what it will do. I'm going to copy this, this in there, and let's quickly say we're going to create uh, this measure in here. Let's paste it. Whoop. So for product category, we'll just have dumb product. Let's replace it with our uh, product category. Yeah. And then this is the product, the product, product subcategory. Okay, cool. So that's the hierarchy level according to chat GPT. I don't think that's going to work at all. But once again, it's my question. I need to learn how to ask better questions. The hierarchy level in. It always returns one. And it's not going to ever work. Um, and then let's look at the second one. Okay, but it's, it gives you a nice explanation. But once again, context is missing. So it doesn't really have context. I try to give it a little bit of a better description here. So here's my, my latest description. Trying to give it more information about the data model and the hierarchy that I'm expecting. And it basically gave me this. So let's quickly paste that in here. Let's see what that... It's not going to give us the right answer. I mean... You need to go a little bit deeper than that. But once again, it could be all my question is not correct. So I already have a sales. Uh, we got a sales amount. Yes. We already got a sales amount. Sales amount. Oh, I did that incorrectly. Let's put a sales amount in there. And this should be the product. The product. That was category, product, category. I can already see it's not going to work. I mean, it's too simple. But once again, it's my question. It's not good. I'm just going to drag it in there. And as you can see, it just basically returns nothing really. Anyway, that's quite interesting. I'm going to reevaluate everything I do in terms of that, you know, until I learn a little bit more. So, what I can learn, what I can see from this is amazing. Chat GPT is amazing, but you know, it all comes kind of comes down to the way you ask your questions. So we need to become better at asking questions. Apply the DAX hierarchy pattern. Just check this out. It's actually all of the steps that I just explained to you. Just now in this video, it actually defines it beautifully here. It tells you exactly what to do. So you identify the hierarchy. That's what I did. And I created a table for each level of the hierarchy, which we already did. 
categories, subcategories with products. Create relationships. Uh, yeah. It's pretty cool. So you can actually use this as per chat GPT to find, you know, uh, versus where you go into Google. So you can kind of see this being applied. Uh, DAX hierarchy pattern. So here you actually find it as well. So it's kind of like the same thing. It's quite interesting. I'm going to drop a link to to this in any way, but it's it's interesting how that refers you to that. It's it's fascinating, powerful.